Welcome back. Since I built this spectrum in the last video, I thought, well, I kind of have to have a real one. And I ordered this on eBay. And it set me back 39 euros. And it's in rough condition. It's very dirty. You can see it if I hold it like this. I have no idea if it works. Well, that's very, very, very dirty. Um, but it's a respectrum. And it seems to have some composite mod. And nothing else. There's no power supply and all that. So, as usual, we have to build that. And I already got parts for that I will build a USB power supply and for that I have this plug here which goes here and this is 9 volt center negative yeah. I will need a USB cable and that will connect to this little board here which takes 5 volts in and can push up to 22 volts out and you can just use the little screw to set the voltage and that will give me 9 volts over standard USB and with a chinch cable to connect to a screen that should be all to at least see if this thing works. So let's build a power cable and check it out but before we do this let's maybe take a peek inside of this. So there are five screws holding this together and this thing has been opened before of course because there's a mod and the screws are a bit loose and I have no idea in which state it is it was sold as as broken or untested so the ribbon cable is ripped here which is not good and this connector seems to be broken off and it's held in by some paper Ooh, that's rough, that's rough. So I will not remove the board now, uh, the keyboard now. Looks like I need a new matrix for that. So let's leave it to that because it looks very flaky. So let's build a power cable, plug it in and see if it actually works. Okay, moment of truth. I'm not sure if this is actually a composite mod, so we might not see anything, but who knows. Let's see. Oh. That made very strange noises. Now let's plug it in again. Now we'll get you the sound. Not sure if this sound comes from the speaker actually. Hmm. Okay, so I think I will take the keyboard out. I'm not quite sure how to do. Okay, so there's the keyboard cable and then there's this little plastic <coughs> thing in there. Oh shit, holding it in and yeah, that was the worst case scenario. So I just ripped the whole cable out. Yeah, so I managed to actually rip the cable. Yeah, so let's, let's see what's going on here. So I have this nice ripped cable here. Well done, well done. 
Well, maybe I can somehow fix this. I have this cable, which is also not in great condition. Okay, so no idea what's happening here. No idea how this should look. Let's plug in again. So this thing, ah, maybe it's just too weak. Let me try this one here. Let's try a different, let's try more amps. Yeah, no, at least not making these squeaky sounds. So I think it was just under, under voltage. So no image. So maybe this is just an an antenna cable and not an RF mod because this just comes out of here. I'm not sure if there's even some modding going on. I'm not sure. Doesn't look modded to me. Just looks like a standard RF modulator. So maybe we actually need a TV. So I tried Spectrum again with a different power supply and it actually booted up but to a black screen with a white border. This points to a RAM problem. So I need RAM. I think I have RAM, I have to look for it. And I, while I was thinking about that, I tried to clean the case a little. That is scrubbing this lower part and this here with a little alcohol and you can see, if you see it in the light, how dirty this really is. It's unbelievable. So I will go on and clean this. Also, since these cables here are ripped, these are double-sided cables. So you can just open these up like this. And there's the bare, there are the bare contacts in there. Yeah, it's hard to, sh to show. Um, however, these are just glued together and you can just open these up. And then there you have the bare contacts. You can theoretically just cut it here and have a shorter cable and plug it back in. So I will try if this works. I have replacements for these cable um, connectors here from the last video. And I will try to get this sticky tape off so I have a little bit more length and I would just cut here and have a perfectly new cable which would be great. Same on the other side so no big deal. And then we can try that keyboard at least for now in my other spectrum my Pico ZX because it has also these same cables and these same connectors. And these are fresh so if, we, if the keyboard works nice. Maybe this is a lost cause and this keyboard is dead already but I will at least try and I will give it a little cleaning before I continue on because it's really 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 dirty. So let me do this and then we will try the keyboard in the other machine. Yeah I managed to disassemble the whole thing and now I can really give it a good scrub. Remove the old tape here and clean the keys which are really dirty in very good shape but really dirty. So there are no ripped keys or something, which is not unusual for these keyboards. And this looks good too. Just needs a good scrubbing. So I will do that and then we have at least a working case, which is about the price of what I paid for. And I'm happy. And if I can get the Spectrum to run, even better. I did clean the case and the plate and the keys and it all looks brand new. Removed the feet, which are really disgusting. Uh, I did remove the sticker from from this these ribbon cables here. I'll have to cut these cleaner. We'll check if there's actually continuity. I'm not sure if there is. Hmm, maybe there is. Clean the bottom half. Um, so now let me put the buttons back on. I did dry blow these with this dry blower so that there's no water in all these crevices because because this is pretty hard to pretty hard to get dry. And you can see how nice these came out. They are like new. And I also removed all the sticky tape from here. I will put on new one as soon as I have tested the keyboard. So that is 
the case right now, which looks, yeah, okay-ish. It has a few scuff marks, but that's okay. It's not a new machine, so I'm pretty happy with this. At least it's clean and I can touch it without getting any diseases, which is good. Let's check continuity on, yeah, on the keyboard. We go in diode mode and then these cables are in two different directions. This one has the, the larger one has the contacts on top and this one I think the smaller one has the contacts on the bottom. So what I will do is I will go and just see if there's continuity from let's say here to here and there is. Okay so these are actually exposed contacts. So if I just cut these clean off, that should give me a fresh start. Should be straight. So the contacts can make good, good contact like this. And on the other side as well. Like this. I'm not sure if it works, we will see, um, but I'm hopeful. Nice, so let me set up the other spectrum and then we will check it out. Okay, got the orange one here, unscrewed the top. Let's remove the cables and let's try the other keyboard. It's a bit more fiddly to do this because the cables are shorter, but it should, should work. Okay, cables are in. So let me show you. I actually connected this and at least this works. Let's get into the basic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Yeah, so final verdict. All the keys work. Nice. So at the minimum I got a working keyboard and a case out of this. Now let's check if we can get the actual spectrum running. So before I do anything else I want to be sure that this mod is as good as it gets and this is not because this cable is completely unnecessary. You can use the internal um, connector here and for that we remove this cable and we put in a 100 microfarad 16 volt capacitor and we put the negative lead through the hole here and connect it to the center of the connector and the other one the positive goes down into this first hole from the from the side here and we solder it there and that is pretty much all there is to this mod and then this here outputs composite and we have to remove this connection down here. So we remove these two connections to the board, replace one of them with one of these capacitors. And that is what I will do now. Let's see what we get. Let's plug it in. Yeah, it's the same. Black screen, red frame. Nice. Okay, so at least we did a better mod job at this, which is good. I like it. Okay, step one. So let's, let's get a lay of this board. We have the ULA here, which is like the PLA on C64s and stuff. I think this is a ROM because it says Sinclair. This is a CPU. It's a D780C-1, which is a Z, Z80 or Z80 clone but it's uh, a plug-in replacement. Um, we have the lower memory, 16K, and the upper memory, 32K. These are D416C chips by NEC. These are 4116s, 2468. Of these give 16K of RAM, so one is 2K. And if these fail, you get a black screen. So if one of these fails, I have replacements. If one of these fails, I think I have replacements. I'm not sure. 
these need three voltages, which is minus five, plus five, and 12 volts, which are here, here, and here. So if they have these voltages, we can assume that the voltages on the board are good because we have then all three voltages that are needed. Incoming the nine volts here, getting regulated down to, I think, five, and through the magic up to 12. Yeah, so what we can do next is measure voltages. Powering up, and we use the ground layer here for ground. Yeah, I think now it's better. And we check here, and we have clean five volts. Check here, we have clean, almost clean 12 volts, and we should have minus five up here. And we have. I think the five volts were here. I'm not sure. Yeah, they are. So voltages are pretty much perfect, at least here. By the way, the, the spectrum runs without these chips, so we, I could desolder all these chips if they are faulty and could let, leave them out, and the machine would run with a 16K down here. So if you ever have a faulty RAM chip here, just desolder them all and uh, yeah, just use the 16K until you have a replacement. The ULA, by the way, is uh, the hardest to come by or the most expensive. The 80 CPUs are still produced, so you can get these for cheap. But these things are expensive. And there are plug-in replacements, um, I think with FPGA or something, which you can use. But I don't have one. So if this is the fault, I have no replacement. But here's stuff on this board, like, well, I, I, th I don't think this is factory. Or this wire here, I'm not sure. So I think we should probably pull up some schematics and and check. I did remove this sticky tape here and under this there was this construction here, which looks a bit odd. I don't think this is factory. Um, this diode has to go over here and these two components are not present on the normal issue 2 board from 1982. That on the other hand is factory. And uh, yeah, I'm going to recap this board because maybe that is the issue with the memory. I read that it could lead to memory issues. So let's try recapping the board, switching out these uh, connectors here. I have two more of these and then uh, see what the board does. Maybe it works. If it doesn't, then I will go and show further. I will not show the recap process. I don't have the... Um, these caps which have the leads on both sides so i will just use one of these and uh, do it like this and have the same result okay did change all the caps there's the carnage and i did change these connectors for the keyboard so that if this works i can actually use the keyboard again because these were very very loose there were plastic parts put in there I also ordered a replacement um, voltage regulator, which will run much cooler and even without the heatsink. So let's plug it in and see if anything explodes. I hope it doesn't. Nope, same result as before. That's good because, well, at least I didn't fuck up the recap. Yeah, still the same fault, but I have a better feeling now having this recapped. So next step would be to remove what's under the heatsink, this construction there. Maybe that is what produces a fault. Or at least see that it works still without this mod, whatever that may might be. This thing here, this diode should go in there. And this construction here shouldn't even exist. I'm not sure what that is. F found nothing about this. Let me quickly remove this and see what happens. Let's see it still works. That in. Nope, still the same result. Okay, but it works, that's good. So we don't need this little thing, whatever that was. I like it. Okay, so we are now back to factory, which is awesome. And now I can go and actually check for the fault. So I think what I will do 
Yes, I will resolder all the upper memory, remove it from the board entirely so that I just have the 16K down here. And uh, yeah, the board runs without these, so it makes fault finding much easier. So it's the next day and I spent yesterday a few hours and uh, some leaded air to replace all the RAM chips, socket all the RAM chips and replace them and still no fun. I did order a replacement for the voltage regulator which came just in. So I will put this in here that will replace the heatsink. And if we take the heatsink off, there's another fun fact. If you take a look at this right here, you can see it's uh, this has four sides and it was connected on these sides vertically on the board. And I didn't notice this at first and just thought I had some wires, but actually this sets which type of ROM is in here. And there's, I think, a Hitachi ROM and an NEC ROM. And the N is for NEC, so you connect the vertical lines and H is for the Hitachi and you connect the horizontal lines. And there's an Hitachi ROM and the vertical lines were connected, so, so this wouldn't work at all. So I changed it. I then noticed that someone actually did a soldering job here, so no, no idea who did this. It wasn't me. So next order of business is replacing the voltage regulator, but it still doesn't freaking boot. And I have read the service manual. I measured all the voltages, which seem to be okay. And everything right now does point to the ULA, which is a 50 dollar replacement for a machine that cost me i think 35 or 40. so if that is actually the case i will put this project to the side and uh, yeah i'm not in a hurry to get a real spectrum so i will have a socketed spectrum which doesn't work which is okay and i got a video out of it so nice and it's all very sticky Okay, let me replace the voltage regulator. We will plug it in again and see what the frack happens then. So I did replace the voltage regulator for one of these cheapo Chinesium models, which cost, I think, a buck. And still works, not, um, or just like the way before. So I consulted the service manual. I re already removed the memory here because the machine runs without this. This is the upper 23K and this is the lower 16K. And the service manual after some initial checkups points to this being the culprit, which is the standard fault uh, or the second most fault next to the transistors uh, five, and, 5 and 4. Um, and then defective RAM chips if you, I think, plug in this uh, wrong polarity. So I have to get a new ULA and that will set me back 50 bucks and I'm not willing to spend that kind of money right now on this machine. I learned a lot about the Spectrum, really, um, and fixing these. It was fun working on this little board here, even though the quality of the boards, uh, I read somewhere in the service manual that 50% of these boards, the initial, or all the Spectrum boards, revision two and three, were actually faulty and had to go back to factory to be uh, to be replaced or repaired. So that is pretty shitty. So uh, imagine you buy a machine and you have to bring it immediately back because the thing has a fault. That's not good. So quality assurance was not up to par with what you would expect from other companies. And uh, the Spectrum is a fun little machine. I will do more Spectrum videos and hopefully I find a cheap ULA. There are replacements, but they are mostly out of stock or also 50 euros, so hmm. Another package came in and uh, yeah, it has my favorite packing material, which is shredded cardboard, which is really shitty. Uh, yeah, let me try to get this stuff out and then we'll take a look at that. It's all neatly packed, which is nice. I like that. Ditch the box and let's see what we have. Starting with this here, 
we have uh, oh man that is really well packaged some caps nice and if you have never seen one this is the official Kempston interface for the ZX Spectrum so you can hook up joysticks here it's dirty and it says warning do not uh, I think it means do not plug interface with the power on I think there are missing words but okay yeah no idea what that is for ah it's a games cartridge port obviously yeah, that looks a lot like a power supply and it's a official Sinkless ZX power supply and volts DC center negative if I'm not mistaken and it has the euro plug I assume this was a UK plug before and now it's a euro plug oh it's a game it's computer scrabble for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum software by Psyon 48k RAM oh it's a cassette and it's missing the manual we have we have handicap golf not to be mistaken with handicapped golf which is a very different sport we have some random oh no it's not random it's Ian Botham's test match pyjama rama and we have test match and one day cricket uh, that's very random and this is stored on a Hammond DPM 48 tape which initially had percussive voices electronic voices rock voices and selection and was not for resale well I bought it so that's breaking the law and last but not least we have the spectrum and a real one and I have no idea what works it's one of those classic eBay tested untested things and we all know what that means so yeah it does seem to have the composite mod so we should be able to get a picture out of this I think I paid 40 for this package here 40 euros plus shipping yeah let's plug it in and see what it actually does if it does anything at all okay I grabbed one of those uh, cables here and as Kellis Coda pointed out in his last video you can actually use a red or a white one even though video is yellow so that completely stumped me I didn't know that so it, uh, I have no idea how they do it but it works so if you use a white cable it still works and it's still video same for the red one so very good thanks for uh, making this happen and telling me because uh, who would have thought so let's plug this into the spectrum here and I have the capture on and let's quickly measure the voltages coming out of this power supply here and we have 12 volts well I think that's good so maybe it's a bit high I have no idea it's an unregulated power supply so they say just plug it in and see what happens and I think that's what we will do so let's go for broke here that is making very unhealthy noises but there was something on the screen right wait 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 let me plug this in again and let's see unhealthy noise no signal that is not good so we have a dead Sinclair nice since I do have another dead Sinclair let's grab that one and try because I need a ULA for that let's try the ULA from this in the other one and see if that actually the ULA works because this is the most expensive part so here's the spectrum uh, let's open this up 
And let's see if we can just swap out the ULA. I did add some new feet here. And this is just five screws. And then we should be in. Let's see. I didn't plug that in. Okay, so the ULA is socketed too, which is good. It's, I think, even the same revision. Issue 2, issue 4A. No, it, this is actually a newer revision. So let me strap in. Better late than never. Let's pull the ULAs. I mean, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that the ULA is the problem on this one here. Too much stuff on my table here. Uh, there we go. So, uh, that is one wet chip. Can you see this? Mm. I'm not going to put that in the socket. Let me clean this. I am 99.9% .9 sure that someone just switched out the ULA before he sold it to me and kept the working ULA. But it is what it is. Let's just see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just too pessimistic about people. Who knows? Who knows? So I know this is definitely composite because I modded this myself. Hmm. Oh! It was a ULA. And it works. That is cool. I like that a lot. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, I have a working ULA, which is great. Let's try to keep it that way. Um, color is a bit off, but you can regulate that somewhere here, I think. And that is not my concern right now. Ah, I did remove all the memory, so I think we only have 16K of RAM here, which is a bit too little. Let's quickly unplug this and let's plug in the keyboard and check if this actually works. But this is great news. So I have a working spectrum, a real spectrum. I have my Pico. But this one is real. Let's plug this in again. Yeah. <laughs> I think this works. Keyboard seems to work. Yeah, awesome. That works. Crazy, 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 crazy. Nice. Okay, at least I got a working singular spectrum out of this. That's good. Now, let's uh, see what this right here is all about. Let's see if it's just a power supply. So let's plug, no, let's not plug that in right now. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.